I would uh, like to now uh, turn our attention to uh, two panelists who have done a lot to make uh, Yono Mac or the, the work of Jonas Macus more uh, known in the international cultural circuit. And uh, they are, uh, of course, Francesco and Francesco Urbano Ragazzi. Their topic is uh, the film, Lithuania and the Collapse of the USSR on the international film and contemporary art circuit. Francesco. Thank you, thank you, Jusas. And uh, uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm really happy, we are really happy and honored to be with such a great uh, group of friends uh, uh, and, uh, for, and so thank you for being here and uh, normally we will probably improvise but in this case we feel that it's better to share like uh, so the part of our screen with you and uh, showing some uh, some glimpses and a, a little presentation about Lithuania and the collapse of the USSR. Can you see the full uh, image? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Great. So, um, as you also said, uh, we would like to um, to give just a little framework uh, um, about uh, Lithuania and the collapse of the USSR. And I would like to start our presentation with a question that seems uh, very easy to answer, uh, but it is not. And the question is, uh, what is Lithuania and the collapse of the USSR? Um, if you read the, the, the image on your screen, uh, uh, apparently it's easy to answer. A motion picture by, by Jonas Mekas. Uh, but uh, first of all, it is a series of images uh, that uh, Jonas Mekas filmed uh, on his TV screen uh, from his apartment in Soho, New York. Those images uh, captured uh, the fight uh, for the independence of Lithuania through the newscasts uh, which aired uh, on American TV between 1989 and 1981, uh, 1991. Almost 20 years after being filmed uh, in 2008, uh, those images were then edited in a motion picture lasting four hours, 44 minutes uh, and 14 seconds. Uh, the film is now available uh, also on the Anthology Film Archives uh, website, uh, free of, of charge until, uh, until the 20th. So I encourage you to, uh, to watch the movie. Uh, it would be an amazing experience. Uh, but on the same year, so again in 2008, uh, the same footage was presented with the same title as a quartet, a four channel video installation that splits uh, the movie into four parts uh, which randomly recombine. Jonas also listed all the main characters appearing in the movie on a small leaflet uh, titled Playbill. Here, Jonas describes uh, Lithuanian the collapse of the USSR as a classical Greek drama. The big faces uh, of the politicians uh, appearing on screen uh, seem to him uh, like ancient gods. The people protesting on the streets uh, were the chorus, uh, the collective conscience of society, and Professor Lasbergis uh, was the hero of the play. Then in 2018, 18, uh, Lithuania and the collapse of the USSR materialized uh, in a photographic series uh, composed of 15 uh, film stills. Finally, in 2018, uh, Lithuania and the collapse of the USSR became a book by Jonas Mekas, we curated for Humboldt Books, a book that includes the full transcript of the entire film. And this is important because, as you know, Jonas never wrote a proper script for any of his movies. Uh, as Una said, uh, Jonas simply reacted uh, to life with his camera. Uh, so the book uh, is also, in some sense, uh, the first script uh, ever written by Jonas Mekas. Lithuania and the collapse of the USSR is all of these things. A historical document, a movie, a video installation, a photographic series, uh, and a book. 
It has a history that spans, uh, a history or better, a life uh, that spans uh, from 1989 to 2019. And this says a lot about how Jonas Mekas worked uh, and how temporality is an important feature to understand his artistic practice. It also says uh, that for Jonas, uh, images were free to live uh, and to travel from one medium to the other. In this sense, uh, Jonas has to be understood not only as a filmmaker, but as an artist who contributed to invent uh, contemporary intermediality. Uh, the first project uh, we worked on uh, with, uh, with Jonas was titled uh, The Internet Saga. Um, it was presented in 2015 uh, uh, on the occasion in conjunction of the, the Venice Biennale. Uh, and thinking about that project uh, today, uh, we still think that uh, one cannot uh, really understand uh, uh, today's internet uh, without knowing uh, uh, Jonas's work uh, and, and artistic practice. Well, uh, if you even uh, watch uh, all these uh, portraits uh, uh, collected from uh, Lithuania and the collapse of USSR in the back, uh, you can't, uh, I mean, it's uh, hard to not associate them to our grids of, of portraits on the, on the grids of Zoom. So some way, Jonas is with us, like uh, um, imagining this kind of landscape. And coming back to, to the film and to the book and to this uh, uh, intermedial artwork, Lithuania and the Collapse of USSR is not just a, a collection of found footage. Is, uh, just as the transcription of the book is not the dragging and dropping of the film onto paper. Um, as in all Jonas, Jonas's diaries, uh, uh, the process is not mechanical. It's the, the physical screen capture of an ongoing Easter story. It's the participation to its making through filmmaking. Jonas will say it's, it's a Kung Fu cinema, reacting with the camera to real life. The personal transcription, transcription of the facts into new facts. This is not uh, a ready-made, but, but I will say a daily made, a continuous act of reappropriation. You can feel Jonas's hand, the noises of the, the studio in Soho, the children, mm -hmm. the wife, someone coughing, the, and sometimes the battery of the camera about to run out. And we don't know if we till Lithuania will, uh, will gain back the freedom, if the USSR will fall, and the battery will resist. We don't know what it will be. Some way, like Jonas Menkas, we are displaced. Like him, we are watching the Lithuania from very far, via the TV screen and the distorted signal from New York, where an exile that began in 1949 has become everyday life. And day by day, moment by moment, together with Jonas, we see what happened. We are watching life go by, as you will say, and it's interesting. Watching and film the present is for Jonas, and maybe, maybe, for, us, for all of us, a way to be present, a pre present to himself, present to ourselves, present to the world, to history, a way to be present to the present. And projecting the images in a movie, in a photographic series, uh, in an installation, in a book, in a view, in, in a speech, is like rewriting them and keep moving them. It's reverberating their present in a continuous present, in a perpetual avant-garde, which make the present present again, and again, and again, and again. So the diary becomes a book, a film, an exhibition. Uh, the little story becomes history. Um, yeah, uh, 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 talking about history, uh, we can, we can, I mean, I was thinking to how a little Baltic nation fight against the giant of the Soviet empire in, the, in Lithuania in the collapse of USSR. It's like David challenging Goliath. And the everyday life of a Lithuanian refugee in, uh, in New York leads to a creation of a new cinematographic genre, the diary, diary film, maybe the most prolific and diffused nowadays. 
And also it leads to the foundation of Field Culture Magazine and to the New American Cinema Group, to the Filmmakers Cooperative, to the Anthology Film Archives. So all these everyday lives becomes uh, little things, these little fundamental things becomes little fundamental nations made by and made of fearless human beings. And these beings don't have to, to become, to turn into big powers, big company, big, uh, big enterprises, big institutions. They can remain human and strong as they are. They just have to be recognized because they are independent, like Lithuania, like cinema, like Jonas, and hopefully, hopefully, like all of us. But uh, let, let's, uh, let's hear this from Jonas' voice. Many of you feel they've waited for so long, but now in an economic crisis, they are not going to be It's not exactly resistance. What happened to uh, Lithuania in 1989, uh, uh, I think that the people created they ignored the Soviet system and they started their own system and ignored completely. So it's not re res the same as when the film independent filmmakers in the 60s, 60s started their own dis film distribution. But uh, the Hollywood the commercial filmmakers do not like our, our films and they do not want to distribute them. We will create an alternative distribution center, filmmakers cooperative, and we'll do, we'll ignore them and we'll go our own way. In the interview we have just watched, uh, Jonas compares uh, Lithuania and independent cinema. Uh, and I think this analogy should be taken seriously uh, because it somehow appears again uh, in an earlier movie by, by Jonas, uh, Birth of a Nation from 1997. Uh, in the movie, we see 170 portraits uh, of independent filmmakers uh, taken with a Bolex camera between 1965 and 1996. Here again, independent cinema is described uh, as a nation being funded. At this point, uh, we need to ask, uh, what is a nation for Jonas Mekas? Uh, what is uh, Jonas's political philosophy? We don't have to forget indeed uh, that Jonas studied philosophy since he was very young. In modern philosophy, there are two ways uh, of explaining why humans uh, gather together in a society. The first theory of the, um, the, the first theory is the one elaborated by Thomas Hobbes who explains the birth of society through fear. Humans, despite being essentially individualistic, are obliged to reunite because they fear other animals. They fear natural forces, and they fear even other humans who might be stronger than they are. I think Jonas discarded this idea completely. The second theory is the one formulated by David Hume, who openly criticized Hobbes on the basis of what the philosopher considered evidences. Hume observed that humans uh, are able to enjoy each other's company, to cooperate in view of a common interest, to take care of their children for a longer time compared to other animals, to feel friendship. In, other word, in one word, Hume observed that humans are capable, capable of sympathy, which means they are capable of recognizing themselves into someone else. It is precisely this sentiment of sympathy that pushes them together in a society. I believe that Jonas contributed the philosophical tradition that Hume inaugurated. In his view, both the independent filmmakers and the people of Lithuania do not come together because of fear of a, greater, of a greater power, but because of sympathy, because they share a common interest, a common vision of the world. In fact, the New American Cinema Group members are not associated by a common homogeneous aesthetics, but rather by their common love for freedom in moving images.
The feelings of fear and sympathy brings me to conclude our presentation thinking about nationalism. Apparently, the name New American Cinema Group defines Yonas's cinema in nationalistic terms. But if you think well, the New American Cinema Group was not American at all. It included displaced persons uh, like Jonas himself, migrants uh, like Peter Kuberka, women like Barbara Rubin, Shirley Clark, or Storm de Hirsch, queers uh, like Gregory Markopoulos uh, and Jack Smith, uh, proletarians, people excluded from the American society. Jonas's idea of nation is therefore anti-nationalistic, and this is true both uh, for the nation of the independent filmmakers and for Lithuania. In the article that um, Una uh, read earlier, uh, Jonas also writes, uh, but they still say, I read every day in the newspaper, ah, the Eastern Europeans are too much in a hurry to become free. They are nationalists. They may upset the economic, the political balance of Europe. Stay put, don't rush. No, my friends, Jonas says, neither of the, bal the balance of power, nor the economy, nor life itself has any meaning if even one single nation, one person remains enslaved. Only when uh, there is total and absolute respect for the individual and for the freedom of every country, of every culture, can the world then call itself civilized? Thank you. Thank you very much.